Hello everyone, my name is Patricia from the Yoga Loft here in Cabarete in the Dominican Republic and we continue our interview series with um, great people from the yoga world and today it's my pleasure to welcome Elnura from 8 Minute Yoga and yeah, hello Elnura, hi! Hi Patricia, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, Elnura is in Germany, so for her it's already dark. And Elnura is the yeah. founder of 8 Minute Yoga, a passionate entrepreneur, a follower of healthy lifestyle, and she's an enthusiast and she's enthusiastic about opportunity, the opportunities technology offers. She loves sharing her experience about startup life and support female entrepreneurship as well as managing FOMO and distractions with mindfulness. Yeah, and today we, uh, we thought let's talk about uh, self-confidence. Um, we both think that yeah. it's still a kind of a taboo topic or maybe a little bit too unsexy, at least in the entrepreneur <laughs> world, right? Um, self-confidence, um, yeah, you might suffer, especially as a yoga entrepreneur. Um, yeah. As we also already said in our pre-chat that, uh, that yogis might not have those entrepreneur skills. And yeah. yeah, maybe you could share a bit your experience. Why is it important to speak about self-confidence? Um, yeah, I think uh, it's an important topic. At the same time, it's very vulnerable, you know, and sensitive because it is self-confidence, you know, <laughs> people don't speak about that very often, especially when they lack it. And um, I think whether you want money, a great car, a car, you know, everything comes to how self-confident you are. Like, um, you know, who became successful, they were before they really lacked self-confidence. Either they learned it or it just came natural to them. I think it's just, uh, it depends on your upbringing, how, how, how you were raised, right? In what kind of environment. But um, it is important because I, I myself <laughs> is a good example of um, being lacking self-confidence. I, I don't know if, if I grew up like this. Um, I didn't want to research on the reasons. I just focused on eliminating it and working on it myself. So self-confidence didn't come to me naturally. So I wasn't born with that. And I did really, I can say, suffer in many areas uh, of my, uh, starting from school, actually, university. Okay. Yeah. I, think is, I, I became aware of that and then started working on it. Okay. And it's, I think it's a skill. And you can, it's like a muscle, you can build it, you can train it. But first, you need to kind of understand that it's something that, you know, stays in the way of getting, getting where you want to be, getting things done. Yeah. 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 And I also think, at least that's my experience, whenever I step out of my comfort zone and try something new, like starting my own business. And I think yeah. a lot of yoga teachers right now who are forced to uh, work outside of uh, yoga studios online and are forced to become a, their own entrepreneur, that can be intimidating. You don't have the experience. Yeah. Um, and yeah, of course, even if you don't know it, self-confidence will be, a, might be in your way. T totally. I, I remember my, e even, you know, when, when you teach yoga, not only online, but you teach, you start teaching yoga in your yoga studio, right? You just came out from your teacher training. I remember I shit my pants <laughs> when, <laughs> my first, my first class. I don't remember what I said what I did it was so um I was so nervous maybe like I'm subconsciously one of the reasons why I wanted to become a yoga teacher was um that I maybe wanted to be able to stand in front of the people and you know teach them and be about it and it it's it's so hard the first um can you hear me yes okay. I can um the first the first um uh, lessons the first classes that I gave uh, were really really hard it's still hard you know because um, I remember at the beginning you got you get um, influenced by your students How, did they look at me in a wrong way did I say something wrong and mm -hmm. and those things are um, 
you should you should learn how to work with that and don't take it personally of course because everyone is thinking about something else at that moment not about you know it's it's 90 percent not about your teaching yeah and uh for yoga teachers it's definitely a big topic this self-confidence how do i build it um yeah and first yeah to understand that it's uh, it can become a problem yeah but it's also what you mentioned um um what i forgot what i wanted to say uh, it's yeah, something I, you I have that as well <laughs> it, uh, yeah. you, you, it's something you can work on right and yeah i also definitely. think what you said about yoga teachers everybody went through that i go through that as well it's because we are so passionate about it, it we are so vulnerable uh, be, uh when you teach yoga because you you put all your heart in it right i mean there's 100% your personality in it. So of course Definitely. your self-confidence yeah. will be affected by it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think why, why it happens is just this, we have a lot of fear, uh, or, you know, of failing of, mm -hmm. um, I'm not perfect enough. I don't know where I, I don't know an, uh, well and something well enough, good enough to teach someone or, you know, um, those, those kind of things makes, make us, not show up not do the thing that or, or don't pursue our dreams mm -hmm. and i think that's it because you asked me at the beginning why is it important to talk about it because if you if you build it a lot of doors will open for you right and if you just live with that fear and kind of ignore it or be not aware of it then you're kind of not using your full potential because yeah. i believe everyone has some kind of gift or some kind of potential to you know develop and and work on it mm -hmm. yeah just and at one point you just have to start right and <laughs> put yeah. yourself out there exactly. and um, it's scary but uh, yeah <laughs> i have to do the work you have to do the work and uh, you have yeah. to show up as you say and um yeah, yeah. is there anything else why you think self-confidence suffers or can go down does anything else come up to your mind i think um per se self-confidence is is a part of our human experience you know i think a lot of people don't speak up but a, like majority of of the population is they are not uh, not self-confident enough Mm -hmm. but they don't don't talk about it because it's as you said it's not sexy and um, it's a very vulnerable topic but it's okay and um, it it can go down of mistakes you have made mm -hmm. and if you come for example from from asian cultures like um, in our culture you don't lose face you know you um, you don't make mistakes <laughs> although you do but you shouldn't and if you are brought up like that, then of course you will try to avoid that throughout your life and your career. Uh, this is what I also had to learn when I came to Europe. Um, that I, the first shock for me was um, I can speak up, I can have a different opinion than the professor at the university, you know, because in our culture we were more, you know, tamed. <laughs> and, um, and I had to work a lot on myself and speak up uh, to have my own voice i had to discover my voice mm -hmm. and um, and this this feeling of hey you are enough you deserve you can do that and um all of these things were um you know discoveries for me and kind of a part of my uh, identity the development because i was like 1920 it was just when my um, personality was developing and yes it's it depends on your environment on your culture uh, on how you were brought up um, there are people who are, I don't want to say you're born, but they're more uh, flexible and open about it. And maybe, maybe it's parents that they always encourage them. And um, this is how they are. Actually, I knew a person who never had regrets and was super, super, super self-confident. It was incredible. But unfortunately, if I can say it, he was a little bit sociopathic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that person loves empathy. That's why, actually, it's it. There should be a balance because it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fear. It's okay to be not okay sometimes. Yeah. And um, I rather be that than not have empathy and feelings and yeah. 
yep, yeah. bad things that I've done wrong, you know? <laughs> yeah, but nevertheless, go for your goals, right? Although you're scared. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. There is a quote, um, do it. How do you say? Do it. Even if you're scared, do it. Yeah. Just and, go and for it. Exactly. And as a yoga teacher, I got a lot of, um, um, you know, the, practi uh, the tips, practical tips. Teach more get more um, lessons, you know, get more classes, get you put yourself in maybe uncomfortable situations to learn and practice your teaching because the more we practice, it's like a muscle you build. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I think it's never ending process though, um, because I still like in, in the in business with the startup, we have so many projects going on. I think I have built thick skin already but there are still so many areas where i i just feel shitty about myself and i'm not you know i'm a little i have self-doubt and um but i know it's okay mm -hmm. and yeah because there are so many you know um impulses coming the social media uh internet um i don't know environment people successful people not successful people <laughs> mm -hmm. and i think that makes um that makes a big influence on us as well yeah um we already spoke a, a little a few hacks now how to work on your self-confidence like just get yeah. out there and do it nevertheless what else come up to your mind to build that uh, muscle um it's okay to learn from it's okay to do to make mistakes i think i already said it um mm -hmm. and to be imperfect not to be perfect because i know a lot of especially female or women who want to make to do everything perfect and they kind of stay we stay in our own way um of delaying showing up you know mm -hmm. that's why i cultivate i try to cultivate this <laughs> philosophy where i'm okay with 80 percent not 100 mm -hmm. so i'm really even training and practicing so whenever i do something Uh, I just, even if it's like not perfect and there is something missing, I say, do it, just, you know, go live, do it. It's fine because then it's done. Mm -hmm. At least you, um, you kind of, you, you, how do you say, you ticked it off. Yeah. And otherwise you still have it. It's in your to-do list and um, it's, it's a never, never ending process. And yeah. um, what else? Uh, being, it starts with being aware of um, that you have that. Maybe, I don't, don't want to call it problem, but that try to start, you know, improving it or to try to find ways how to improve it for yourself because we are so individual. There are people who, you know, work in, in a certain way. They Maybe you need to first read watch things about it to understand it and then start applying those tips mm -hmm. yeah and it's uh, putting yourself out there and trying to find the situations where you can practice it and you can practice to trust yourself and say hey i trust myself i want to do it and i know it will work out you know mm -hmm. it's like training your internal confidence and it will get stronger mm -hmm. that's uh, that's also a very valuable a practical tip that um, you can do and yeah. I mean you know it's really about doing it unfortunately. yes yes <laughs> you just uh, close it. your eyes and go through right yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah yeah and, uh, um, sometimes oh, sorry and maybe last thing is just the, the slowing down uh, because we are also a lot like overwhelmed Like we moved now um, one week before Corona hit us, we moved to a countryside and I just noticed how um, like I was all over the place before being in the city, running a startup, having a baby and all of this stuff. And then I realized that you also need sometimes to slow down and gain a perspective, you mm -hmm. know, and that the things also can fall apart. Yeah. And, uh, and the slow down is also for me uh, like a hashtag right now that I'm incorporating into my life. It's, and also if you're teaching uh, a class, sometimes it helps to slow down, you know, yeah. you know, the teachers and, and when you're nervous, you just talk, 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 but when you slow down, make a pause, 
it has some power <laughs> totally yeah yeah beautiful yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I can totally vote for that and I need to work on that as well, slowing down, <laughs> give people more time as well with that. And as you mentioned, hashtag <laughs> um, speaking. So I speak yeah. a, a lot of yoga teachers I talk to. I hear a lot that uh, social media has kind of a negative effect on their confidence. Everybody's Instagram profile looks so much prettier. They seem to be <laughs> so much more successful. Um, they really say that social media is sucking their energy what's your experience with that i totally agree <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think, i think when we when we see those beautiful feeds we inside we know that it's bullshit actually you know we know that it's that moment only it's not true but still we watch it and you know you would like to be there in the sunset being thin <laughs> and walking on the bikini and i think um so what i did actually recently i did a digital detox as well because i noticed mm. that it's definitely um eating up my energy i also had a conversation uh, with my husband about it because he also noticed that because work you know we have we have different accounts and i have to um manage them look the strategy here and there that's why uh, you can get sucked up very quickly into um into this instagram void yeah and for me personally i did notice that when i spend more time on it i, I feel tired and exhausted and yeah. anxious and it happens automatically That's why I do, um, I actually even tried in the past to like completely get it off, get off, but because of, you kind of have to, and it's, it's okay, you know, it's, it's our human nature. Um, and um, so I do digital detoxes. I try to be, stay away a little bit. And um, I follow, for example, people who I, who inspire me to you know eliminate things or accounts that doesn't um, bring me you know, that that makes me for example yeah mm -hmm. and you can see that you can uh, observe it and see uh, how how you feel about it so it's kind of a self-protection as well it's self-care and it's totally normal to feel a little bit frustrated about yourself that you're not living that life <laughs> but yeah. um in the long run of course it's um it's not good that's why i think instagram even started this initiative especially for teenagers um they were rolling out this program where people don't see how many likes you got ah uh, yeah yeah but i don't know if they if, if they if went they through followed that. through with that it was yeah. a topic last year i remember that as well but yeah. tell us more about the digital detox is that just you tell yourself okay x amount of days hours whatever i don't go online or yeah so i completely got off insta off everything uh so instagram i don't have facebook for example on my phone anymore anymore um for one month um so i didn't have it on my phone I didn't check it at all. And uh, the business side, I had someone who helped me. So she was helping me with that, uh, assisting, and we just chatted about what, what has to be shared. And at the beginning, it was a little strange, but um, it, it was okay, actually, with the time, like week, second week. There were times where I, ah, I want that instant gratification. I want to look at that, you know, those feelings. I want to see my likes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't posting anything as well, so it was fine with with the time. You know, when you don't post anything, you, you don't see anything. So and um, yeah, it makes you aware of how much time you waste if you, you know, if you were checking feed and uh, and that's why actually and doing some courses also about it, how to stay more mindful and how to use technology more mindful because I, I love technology per se. I, I think it's powerful and if you use it mindfully, there are so many things that you can you know, do and accomplish effectively. And uh, yeah, time gets wasted and with social media, it's better if you are a creator rather than a consumer. 
So that's, mm -hmm. if you have that mindset, um, I think it's, it, it, if you still like to be on social media, then with this kind of mindset, you know, share something which is valuable and it's not like hollow, some kind of, I don't know, picture or whatever. Yeah. So it's just something that inspires people or starts some kind of meaningful conversation because I, I mean, it's a little cliche, but sometimes I ask, why is Instagram not a place where we get built up? You know, mm. build up our self with confidence and share something nice rather than, unfortunately, 90, 99% of the time people just get out very frustrated out of it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't know how to change that. Um, but definitely, I know, also know a lot of people who are, um, who get anxious and more a negative effect of social media. Yeah, yeah. I think the tools you're sharing, the hacks you have are, are really cool with the one month i didn't expect it that long to be honest one month yeah. complete detox <laughs> yeah. and also being aware of okay we need to have uh, we need to have instagram on our phones but maybe get rid of facebook and the facebook messenger on your phone oh and, yeah. Mm. yeah also and tell me if you, yeah do you that's also i uh, a lot of people are doing now they turn off all the notifications I, I did it, I think, a year ago. And before, everything on, you know? Yeah, bing, 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 uh, bing. All the notifications. Yeah. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah, and it's crazy. So that's, that helps a lot as well. It's yeah. just calm. And, and coming back what you said on meaningful conversations, um, I also like to maybe not post that much anymore, um, but uh, comment more. Mm -hmm. comment more on on people i like people mm -hmm. i follow where i see oh it's such a cool post why did no one comment on that and initiate the conversation from there yeah that's uh, maybe yeah. one of my personal tricks uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah definitely you mentioned already a couple of times anxiety and yeah anxiety and stress in fact seem to be two more of those big topics everybody's yeah. talking about but no one really opens up about it sometimes i feel anxiety having anxiety issues is kind of trendy even but um coming back to you personally um when do you personally yeah. feel anxious and when do you get stressed you have such a busy life uh, with being an entrepreneur with the startup um being a mom yeah yoga yeah. on top um tell us yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> i think if if we don't do like protection uh, if you don't protect yourself from stress it can be every day um i do get stressed yeah work a lot with the screen um and i'm a natural warrior unfortunately and i have also worked on that a lot so actually you can use me as, as an example for all of those bad things <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah it just you know the the thoughts just creep in and um just make you crazy for a while and that's that's when you get um anxious stress uh, and when i don't get enough sleep that's a very trend trend uh with in my life i already have um identified that and um that's pretty much it uh some things that i can control you know i can sleep more i can reduce uh, my working times looking at my phone um mostly those those things uh, and i try to when i whenever i notice it's coming i try to really get rid of these things or make at least just one day try not to do anything mm -hmm. it's a very luxurious thing of course although with the baby now i i'm more flexible because i have I, ha i have to take care of the baby so no social media no phone for me that's okay, but still there is that diff the other kind of stress. Yeah, you have to uh, finish a lot of tasks and um, yeah, and this overwhelm as well. Yeah. As, as you're right, all of these things are um, a very modern like pro problem of a modern person. And a lot of these things actually are hypothetical. These, they are all in our heads. And um, I know that, <laughs> but still, you think about that and you just you just get worried you know yeah and there are a lot of yeah there are a lot of tools how you can control it or and i and i noticed in my case i need to try to when i whenever i notice that i have to um 
ich muss handeln. I have to act and okay. uh, otherwise it just gets, you know, stranger and stranger and um, I might lose the whole day of just being, I don't know, feeling blue or I just need to go for a run or do yeah. some yoga, listen to the music. Um, it's also hor hormonal with us women. And I noticed after the baby, um, the whole hormonal um, balance is not there anymore. So I need to be even more careful with that and try to use my, open my toolbox, you know, <laughs> yeah. and see, okay, what, what can I use today? You know, uh, what yeah. can I do? And um, activity helps me. Uh, okay. in terms of doing a workout 30 minute workout and stuff like that yeah okay um do you also did you also change a little bit your your nutrition did that help mm. do you have experience there that's one of my new favorite topics that's why I yeah <laughs> i'm actually i'm actually doing a intermittent fasting right now i am ah, yeah. it's my third uh, third week yeah uh, so was because I gained uh, a little bit weight after pregnancy and I wanted to get rid of that <laughs> yeah but I took I took time uh, I know my I'm very thankful grateful for my body going through the whole thing pregnancy birth and after we need it needs like, like again one year to recover itself and um, I, I'm very restricted in practice and like physical exercise and now I'm starting to do more and more But then I thought, hey, um, I want to try this intermittent fasting thing because it's healthy and it's not calorie counting. Yeah. So you can eat pretty much everything. You just have to be disciplined with the time. Yeah. And I, I really like it. I, yeah. I chose my time in a way that, um, that fits me with the baby as well. And um, it's, it's working, yeah. I think I lost like a few, maybe two kilo um but uh, i feel i feel fresh sometimes i get very much irritated when i'm hungry in the morning so like if, when a baby cries and you know uh -huh. i'm one of those person who says uh who says i'm so sorry what i when i what i said that I was hungry. Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um you can ask my husband i'm so imp i become so impatient but it also teaches you patience yeah yeah and i'm really looking forward uh, to the end um, how, yeah how it, how it, how it goes yeah But we yeah. also started here an intermittent fasting schedule and it's i can totally vouch for everything you said i'm also one of those persons who get oh, cool. very irritated very when i'm hungry but this oh, one is like just like hey come on you can do this 11 30 a.m you get your first meal you can do that hang in there and then suddenly it becomes manageable and i also find that i have much yeah. more energy and um Yeah, it has so many positive effects as well with uh, anxiety and being stressed and so on. And uh, yeah, I think uh, having a look or thinking about your nutrition, uh, food is medicine. So yeah, even if it's not food directly because intermittent fasting, you can still eat whatever you want. But I think uh, yeah. having a look at your nutrition, being more mindful and aware of it can help. And, and actually, when you start fasting, I think uh, your, your stomach shrinks a little bit, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you, are, you just became automatically aware of what, what you eat and yeah. how you eat. And you just don't eat. I mean, I, I would snack a lot and that's, that's gone now because <laughs> with the baby, you know, stress, I just, I, I don't know, it, it was a new habit during the pregnancy and after that, snacking in between. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I... Yeah, I uh, eliminate it now. Yeah. Hopefully it will stay that way. Yeah, de yeah, definitely a great thing. It is, it is, and highly recommended. Yeah, we were already, you were already telling us that you are a mom. Um, yeah. And I guess uh, anxiety and stress are now even more a role, uh, uh, play now more a role in your new role as a mom. Um, as a mom. <laughs> and do you now think you, um, deal with these topics differently now that you are a mom? Can you compare it to the time before and after? Or did the topic of self-confidence, anxiety and stress only come up really now? Oh, I think one thing is definitely for sure what that changed is uh, patience 
because uh, I used to be very impatient. I think I'm still impatient, but in a way with the baby, I learned to be patient because um, the hard way, you learn the hard way, there is no other choice, right? And um, that's, that's something um, I notice that, uh, that has changed now. Um, self-confidence. I think mom, mom always deal with self-confidence because of their body, because of the hormonal disbalance, everything changes, your body changes, uh, you start crying for no reason and stuff like that. And that's, that's shaken a little bit, yes, but I think you can build it up mm -hmm. because, um, yeah, again, you have to do the work, um, but then it's incredible how, how much our body can do bodies can do and um it you know everything shrinks back everything is then recovered <laughs> and then when i look back at just just the time after pregnancy or after giving birth oh my god i was like oh, total <laughs> wreck uh, sorry sorry my language but um yeah and then it comes back yeah so self-confidence gets a little bit shaken because of the body imagine these things that you tell you know in your head uh, you become more patient with the baby uh, and maybe a little bit more empathetic and understanding because my mom used to tell me like when are you gonna have babies then you will understand me oh okay <laughs> i can understand her in this way um yeah but all in all it's um yeah it's a unique experience okay to be a mom <laughs> beautiful yeah thanks so much for opening up about uh, yeah, all sure. your experiences and you have now the opportunity to give some final thoughts uh, maybe something i didn't i forgot to ask uh, something else that comes up to your mind you want to share um i think it's um one of the inspiring conversations i had lately because you know it's not it's, it's about uh, something deep, something that we don't talk about very honestly. And um, lately, like in recent months, I, do, um, I, do, I did start researching, doing research on that, that, those kind of things, more like self-confidence, procrastination, mm. getting things done, being more focused, productivity, you know, because being a mom is also, you need to be productive and it's like you don't have time when the babies leave me use that time to do that thing no time for browsing no time for anything <laughs> yeah either that so, either work or self-care <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly or self-care and um that's why uh it was a really pleasure to chat that it's very interesting and i i also like to know I would love to know the experiences of other people. How are they dealing with that? Yeah. How are you doing that? It's, it's, oh, I love learning from others. I love listening to people and observing things. I think that's the best way to learn. And otherwise, if I don't know if our chat inspires people or you know touches the nerve, um, I can recommend um, a really cool blogger. His name is Darius Oro. Um, I follow him. I read a lot of his books and he inspires me a lot. And he writes about all of these topics um, that we just talked about. And mm -hmm. he recently um, released a book called uh, Work First. So like working mindset that mm -hmm. you have to do the work first and the rest comes later, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, maybe you can research him, see, uh, read, read his articles um, and I mean, there are a lot of other productivity and, um, you know, those kind of coaches that you can, can get inspired. Yeah. Beautiful, Elnora. Yeah. Thank you so much. I will I no make worries. sure that I link everything, of course, to 8-Minute yeah, Yoga, uh, to Darius. Yeah. 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 Okay, I will link. <laughs> Thank you. And if there are any yoga teachers who, are, uh, who want to learn a little bit more, how to upskill themselves they are welcome to visit eight minutes yoga of course beautiful yeah, i mean patricia patricia is the living right there <laughs> one of our great teachers at thank eight you. minutes yoga that we love yeah thank you so much Elmora. thank yeah. you too patricia it was a pleasure thank you thank you <laughs>